This is my sleeping bag. It's soft and warm. I'm sure no living creature would be able to resist the temptation to spend a minute or two inside. Much like your mom, your mother, audience. They'd want to dig deep into it with a couple of favorite items. <laughs> So a year and a half ago, we played a really interesting game called Bag of Milk Inside a Bag of Milk Inside a Bag of Milk. It was this creepy, horror, really off-putting, weird, purple game that was an amazing quick story about anxiety wrapped up in a little horror show. A bit ago, the developer released a part two to it called Milk Outside a Bag of Milk Outside a Bag of Milk. And once again, it has flying reviews. And I mean better than like most things on Steam. So today we're gonna be diving back into the weird world of bag of milk inside a bag of milk inside a bag of milk. But this time the bag of milk is outside a bag of milk. Outside a bag, bag of milk. Okay. <laughs> We're back, baby. Oh. I'm walking to my room, trying not to look around. She did not take the prescribed recommended amount of Benadryl, I can already tell. Playful shadows dance around me here and there. They dash all over the walls, the ceiling. One of those shadows whizzes past me, touching my face ever so slightly. I smile and continue walking, paying it no mind. Sometimes it's so easy to lose self-control and track of time, spinning in a joyful dance. But I'm in a bit of a hurry here. Mom told me to go to bed. I walk past the kitchen on the way to my room. The door is shut, but I can still feel the chilling air coming through the other side. My first thought is that there's a living corpse blowing into the keyhole, laughing mockingly. That's a very weird first thought, but yeah, that's so silly. I'm absolutely sure we have no corpses in our kitchen. I, I know for sure that we've never had any corpses in our kitchen, actually. I'm, I'm absolutely sure of that. You know, it's <laughs> out too sure. I break into a run and dash toward the closed door. The shadows intensify their chaotic dance. Are they trying to stop me or calm me down? I don't know. It doesn't matter right now. Don't you get it? I wave my hands around as I run, trying to chase away my annoying pursuers, but then I suddenly realize that I won't be able to stop in time. I've got no other choice but to break the door down. If there's somebody inside, I'll surely scare them to death, but wait, how can I scare to death someone who's already dead? What if it actually revives them? No, 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 I, I don't want that. What, what do I do? I couldn't fully complete my thought when my shoulder hit the door and it flew open. This is already nuts. Whoa. As I expected, there was no living corpse inside. But there was a bag of milk I bought today. Wait, wait, wait real quick, down in the fucking comments, because I'm American and I've, I've heard of bags of milk. Where? Where are you people buying milk in bags? Let me know down below, right now. Anyways, sorry for my uppers. Back back to the, to the the scene setting, the world building. Sitting right in the middle of the table, watching me with its unblinking eyes. I stare back. Nothing happens. <sighs> Although, what exactly did I expect? Gratitude? Have I done something that warranted it? A bag of milk probably doesn't care whether it's on the shelf, in a store, or on the table in my mom's kitchen. On the, on the other hand, nobody would drink milk inside the store, which means I took it from the safest place in the world into the scary unknown. I'm so sorry, you poor thing. <laughs> I'm already sympathizing with this person's brain so fucking much. I turn away in shame and leave the room in a hurry. I only bring others trouble. Damn. Don't be so hard on yourself, champ. It's not your fault you were born in a place where milk is put into bags. I walk towards my room through a narrow corridor. It's the face. It's the face from the first thing. I meet a familiar, formless creature at the door. It locks me in its clutches and starts sniffing every inch of my body like a hungry dog. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh. I'm not struggling, I know it's useless, I just stay silent and endure its tight grip that stops me from moving. Oh my god, it is the thing from the first game! After sniffing me from head to toe, the creature holds out its ugly paws, bearing a single claw thin and sharp like a blade. Again? I stare questioningly into the monster's bottomless eye sockets. Goddamn, look at that thing! It looks like a giant baby! Don't move! The creature squeezes my hand until my veins start bulging, and I just keep staring into the blank cavities where its eyes should be ignoring all the pain. 
have promised so many times. Stay put. The moment it says that its claws pierce my arm. Oh, fuck. I don't feel anything other than the barely discernible crawling under my skin and the ring of tightly sprung sh sinews? Sinews is, is a biological thing, right? Is that like the, the body? I only know what a sinew is from a song called Red Right Ankle. I'm not qualified for this shit. God damn, the fucking soundtrack's cranking. No, yes! This is already so sad. All right, all right, keep it together. Keep reading. Claw injects its venom into me. It hurts. A white veil appears in front of my eyes. My fingers cramp and start twitching frantically. I lose control over my body, and I slowly slide to the floor. Just like last time, but... Why? Why do I feel so hot? I feel my blood boiling up. Strong shivers run through my body, paralyzing every single cell while my veins and arteries heat up, almost bursting from that pressure. I, I try screaming, but... Instead of producing words, I vomit thick, milky foam. The creature notices it and throws itself at me in anger, grabbing me by the throat while keeping the poisonous claw inside my arm. Kill me! Kill me! <laughs> Hysterical screams resound through the corridor. In a fit of madness, the creature starts scratching my neck. Bright splashes fly everywhere, hitting the walls with the loud sound. I try to imprint where every drop fell in my memory so I could gather them all later. I need to remember, I need- Everything turns pitch black in an instant. Say it. I'll never drink milk ever again! <laughs> what?! <laughs> I'll never drink milk ever again! I... Say it! I'll never drink milk ever again. SAY IT AGAIN! I'll never drink milk ever again! I'll never drink milk ever again! It's just what's like being lactose intolerant? Is that the fucking the hat man equivalent of drinking a glass of milk? Oh shit. Wild start. I finally get to my room. I'm so tired of all this fuss. Thankfully, I still feel comfy and warm in my room. Even the weird sounds coming from outside don't make me anxious at all. Mom told me to go to bed, so I need to perform all the needed preparations. I've washed my face, and I'm standing in front of the mirror with a toothbrush in my mouth. I look at my reflection, and it shows absolutely no desire to sleep. Yeah, I get how you feel. And there was a time when the last minutes before I sleep were my favorite time of the day. I loved anticipating the inevitable moment when the reality and the dream world would clash. I woke up for that moment's sake, lived through the day for it. My biggest dream was to sleep all day long. It would have been so cool, but the dreams always slowly but surely slipped away. As if somebody fished them out of my head, one after another one after another, till nothing was left. Now I have to sleep again, even though I don't feel any need for it. After finishing with my face, I usually reach out for my pills. It's funny, but I have no idea how they work separately since I will always swallow them as a bunch without thinking. Damn, that is a lot of pills, my guy. Uh, I want to have a better look at it, so to twirl it between my fingers, to chew on it, and do anything to stall for just a little bit more time. A smooth, protruded red capsules looking at me. It's covered in a murky, semi-transparent fluid, but I can still discern its contents. So what do we have inside of you? I gently press on the capsule from both sides, and to my surprise, it turns out to be soft and squishy. I press harder and the capsule pops. Uh, sticky, bright red liquid pours out. Uh, filthy. I'm sorry. I'll stop. I'll stop. The pill flies straight to the waste bin, and I start rigorously washing my hands. No, there's no way I'm drinking that. Next was a flat pill of the same blood red color. And there were some letters printed out on it. Uh, I get it. This is the medicine that makes me really sleepy. But it's not the type of sleep I want. That's not it at all. It's fake. No, no, I don't even want to look at it. The pill flies into the waste bin as well. Skating the meds, huh? Naughty, naughty. You threw the perk 30 in the bin. Punishable by death. I study every single pill, all sides. And I find a reason not to swallow it. I invent my own medicine instead, and enjoy swallowing them one after another, letting myself drown in their healing efforts. Hey, my neck doesn't hurt anymore. My hand doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my head doesn't hurt anymore. Haha. <laughs> Holographic perks again. How come I didn't think of this earlier? This is so simple. I need to brag about it to someone right away. But not my mom, she'll just scold me. And she's sure I'm already sleeping anyway. I, I don't want to disturb her without a reason. I'll think of something myself. Besides, I just really want some small talk. I, I wonder who's going to be my conversation partner. Is he going to be the guy from the store in the first game? Hey. Hey. 
How you doing? My name's Big Goosey. God, the art style. The fucking visuals in this game are nuts. Hey, long time no see. Oh, she's talking to me. Okay. Hey, how you doing? Uh, hasn't even been an hour, dummy. I just been actually like 10 seconds. There you go, bullying me again. I said, okay, lighten up, partner. I said dummy. Aren't you even a little bit happy? Not even the slightest bit. No, motherfucker. No. Well, then I'm not happy either. Ha! You need to go to bed. No, you've been in control for way too long already. It's my turn now, all right? I'll just stay silent until the medicine's effects wear off. How about that? Hey, you can't do that. You need to do your best to make me feel better. It's exactly what I'm doing. This is for your own good. You need to go to bed. What a bully. Actually, why am I even worried about this? In reality, I don't need you at all. You mean you don't need me? Well, it's just gonna click the play button on Steam. I'm so energetic. Yeah, I feel great, which means I can do anything. A and you, you can only watch and agonize over your uselessness. <laughs> I can imagine how angry you are right now. What made you so happy all of a sudden, huh? Why would I be sad? Remember yourself a couple hours ago? I don't know what you mean. Uh, you kind of invented a, a shadow monster that injected poison into your veins because you saw a bag of milk. Uh, what do you mean you don't know what I can mean? Uh, which one is it? Why the f*** you lying? Why the f*** you lying? Bitch, stop f***ing lying? Yeah, I think we're going with bitch, stop f***ing lying. No, -uh, I still don't understand. Whatever. Unlike you, I won't forget that pathetic snotty girl for a long time. She just whines and whines. Don't even try to ruin my mood. I want to have fun while we're together, all right? So you're the one calling the shots now. I'm pretty sure I'm her brain right now. Yeah. Well, let's see how long you can last. I, uh... Am I really that pathetic? <laughs> oh, the only options dot dot. Can you imagine? Am I really that pathetic? And it's just... Uh, say something. I can feel tears streaming down my cheek, hanging from my chin, and then falling on my clothes, burning holes in them. That was fast, but not unexpected, you fing little crybaby. Hey, at least I tried. Go wash your face, then we'll decide what to do with you. Wow. That, I was a dick that entire time. That felt terrible. Back at the mirror. I'm in front of a mirror again. I keep staring at my reflection, trying not to get distracted by the sneery looks the walls are giving me. Trying not to drown in their giggling. Then me in the mirror also shows me a creepy smile and bares her teeth at me. I shut my eyes, but it doesn't help. It wouldn't have helped even if I sunk through the floor. I started counting in my mind. Two squared, two by two squared, a square squared, a square pyramid squared, pyramidal structure cubed, a pyramidal structure hypercubed. What the f does hypercubed mean? I feel better. Okay. But my head is splitting apart now. I think we should apologize. You're kind of dicks before. Uh, I'm sorry for being rude. It's not your fault. You're right. It's not my fault. It's your fault for being so fucking pathetic. <laughs> oh, this is a sad game about serious things. It's never your fault. Fine. You can keep on blaming yourself, but don't overdo it. I don't know why, but I thought I'd be able to take control. I was almost ready, too. I was sure I'd be able to change something after all. I was able to buy milk, you know. So wait, this has to be like directly after the first game when we managed to buy milk. The first game was literally a story about somebody who has a, such bad anxiety and mental illness that something as small as going to the store to buy some milk for your mom is a mountainous task. And that's the whole game is you're trying to overcome that anxiety and OCD and depression and go buy a fucking bag of milk. So this has to be like right, right after. I don't remember what happened at the end of the last one, but she just, she just got done buying the milk. Is that why you threw away the medicine? What a stupid decision, right? Whatever it was, it was your decision. Does it even matter? The text boxes are us, by the way. Like, are us talking to her. Yes, yes, it does matter. Somehow I find it hard to believe. Then why did you do that? I felt like I'd be able to fight it on my own. It's true, the pain subsided for a bit at that time, but now I feel it triple in force. It hurts so bad. 
Oh, fuck. Oh, you know what to do. Could be a really, really taxing choice. We're going to try it. You know what to do. Dejected, I reach out to the shelf with my medicine. I swallow the pills one after another, chasing away the unpleasant visions that keep floating up in my memory. And yet, my mind still draws a terrifying picture. Lumps of coagulated blood and transparent coating traveling down my esophagus, scratching at soft walls, leaving behind furrows. I shake my head violently. I don't care if it makes me feel dizzy or worsens my pain. I just don't want to think about something so repulsive. You still haven't changed. <laughs> You bought the fucking milk. Kudos, but you haven't changed. What do you mean? You're afraid of being alone. This worries you much more than the pain. Yeah, I guess. I toss the last pill to the air and catch it with my mouth. How a real gamer takes their anxiety meds. Imagine that you're hanging out with the homies. He throws the last perk in the air and catches it with his mouth. Okay. I'm really, this is so cool so far. I fucking love this. Okay, now we're tweaking out on the bed. I lie on the floor and look up at the ceiling. I can clearly hear water running in the metal pipes up there. I hear the cracking of concrete blocks that will someday surely fall on my head. But I'm not afraid of that at all. I can't imagine my death coming from above. Rather, it's rearing its claws from somewhere below, waiting for me to lose focus. Do you, uh, want to talk about it? Nah, I've had enough of talking. Just vibing. Vibing on the floor after taking my anxiety meds. <laughs> what do you want then? <sighs> I just just want to lie down for a bit. I know that feeling. Let's let's give her her wish. Let's give her a wish. Let's just be quiet for a second. I'm feeling bad now. <laughs> like, now I want to be the nice. I want to do the nice guy things. I carefully extract thoughts that are yet to be fully formed from my head and lay them out on the ceiling in orderly rows. Now it's my corkboard. In hopes of seeing the whole picture, I switch them from one place to another, pile them on top of each other, scatter them around. I throw them off with my hand, annoyed and start over. I can't do it. You can always imagine your thoughts as something small and swarming, like uh, cockroaches or bugs under your skin. I hate cockroaches. Can I make them fireflies? I, I don't fucking make them whatever you want. You can make them a little fucking naked flying Danny DeVito's for all I care. Ooh. I don't even have time to blink before my thoughts, they're fireflies now, start whirling all over the ceiling in their own accord, forming whimsical patterns. Me, me and the boys out in the yard forming whimsical patterns around your block, you feel me? Sorry, quick outburst. Back to the story. I can only observe them and wait for the right moment. It's just that moment doesn't come. The mocking sounds of flapping wings coming from the ceiling make me start losing my patience. Enough. I hate you. I hate you. I spring to my feet and scream at the top of my lungs. The fireflies scatter. Good job. Now start over. No way! Unstable behavior makes you look bad. I don't give a damn! So that doesn't bother you? Should it? Hmm? No? A lot of people act like this. Really? There's nothing shameful for snapping at somebody if you got a reason. You did have a reason, didn't you? Um. Uh, You'll surely get better, believe me. Now, start over. <laughs> You're at it again. At what again? What do you mean? Never mind. I've changed my mind anyways. Please don't stay silent for this long anymore. I'm having a hard time without your help. Fine. I raise my eyes to look at the ceiling once more. Sadly, all my fireflies seem to be hiding somewhere. I need to find them. Oh! Woo! Game got me tearing up! Oh, Jesus. Forget about them and go to bed. You don't need to find them all right now. No, you don't get it. If I'm thinking about something, I need to finish my thoughts, or else... I glance around the room. There are too, too many places for a creature as small as a firefly to hide here. They can be anywhere. Suddenly, 
I hear a deafening rumble. The clock just hit midnight. It's so late already, but I can't go to bed right now. Will you help me? Please tell me you will help me. Come on, stop bullying me. You promised to talk to me. What were you thinking while lying on the floor? What do you mean? You should know better than anyone else. That's just the thing. I have no idea. This is weird. Will you tell me? I... Oh, shit. What just happened? I roll my sleeve up and start rubbing my eyes intensely. They're so itchy. Why are you- why are you crying? Why are you crying? My eyes are itchy. Did you drink milk? This is like lactose intolerant Silent Hill. Did you drink milk? I wonder if I tear out all my eyelashes one after another, will my eyes stop itching? I wonder if I tear out all of my eyelashes one after another, all of my eyelashes one after another, if I tear out all of my eyelashes one one after another, what have you done? I, I need to gather the glass and then I need to have a bath and then... Here. Drink some milk. No! Oh, f I just got achievement. First death. I died and felt something. I stand in the middle of my room, gasping for air. I think I just experienced death. I don't know any other way to explain what happened. Well, that was surely something. You tell me or not. Come on, lady. Cough it up. About what? what? Ah! Let's look for you. You are stalling. Stalling me? Stalling? Yes, you were stalling. You're acting weird. Help me instead of running your mouth. I've already had enough adventures before bed. I need to gather my thoughts quickly and go to sleep. My thoughts are hiding from me. To be honest, I have no idea where to look for them. I'm sure the thoughts hide from most of you guys, too. Me neither. I guess we'll have to tear the whole place apart. No, 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 no. If I make even the smallest messes here, I'll feel really bad. All the things should stay in their places, and that's it. Why? You don't even know what you... You motherfucker. Yeah, you don't got a reason, do you? Are you trying to come up with a reason right now? Who, me? No, no, of course not. I forgot. I think you forgot to put up your mind block. I can see through you. Rude. All right, then. So we need to find a bunch of tiny insects inside a mountain of junk without moving anything even an inch. Yeah. <laughs> Becoming a visual novel character helped me achieve my goal. Now I want to become a point and click adventure game character. You know, those games have moments when you just look at different objects and something inevitably happens. It sounds so fun! And what about the things you use regularly? Do you refuse to touch them as well? It would make it even more interesting. This is... this is so childish. And wanna know what's the best part? You'll be the one doing it! I start panicking as soon as I get in a multiple choice situation. I'll just keep changing my mind and end up crying and running away. Do you want that to happen? You're such a handful. <laughs> oh, that's a hard ass line, dog. You've already proven that you're able to make decisions. Why not continue on that road? Come on, don't be so boring. I was just teasing you. You know, I have to bear the whole burden. Asking for help is a reasonable decision, too. Let's begin already. I, I, I like how the moment we start talking about something uncomfortable or giving advice, she just diverts instantaneously. I go to the middle of the room and look around. Where would I hide if I was a tiny little firefly? Ooh, this is so thrilling. My heart gets warmer from the pleasant anticipation. Hey. What? Look down. I look down. After a moment, a small ball of light and warmth crawls out from under my sweater. Wowee! It's nice to have a little wowee moment there. That was, that was nice. I carefully grab the firefly, pleasantly scorching to the touch. I put it on my shoulder. I'm sorry, little guy. Time to come home now. As if it was an order, the firefly slowly drifts up, circles around my head for a bit, and then flies into my ear with the speed of a bullet. There's bugs in my skull. Yee-hee-hee, <laughs> tickles! <laughs> There's bugs in my brain! <laughs> One down. Let's look for the others. There was like 50 before. Oh, we're in control. If I was a pesky little firefly, where would I hide? I'd hide inside a laptop.
I look at my laptop. I haven't touched it for years, so it's covered with a thin layer of dust as thick as my finger. A bizarre item. I fear it. Why? I don't know why I talked like that. <laughs> it's a long and boring story. Wonderful. Tell me about it. Hmm. I insist. I don't remember how it appeared in my room. Oh, so I guess one day a stork just flew through the window and dropped a MacBook on your desk, huh? That makes no sense. One of my parents probably brought it here because they couldn't find a better place for it. They didn't prohibit me from using it. On the other hand, they encouraged me to do so. Sure, I've spent whole days in front of the screen. Games, drawing, engineering, calculator. So much fun stuff to do. You had amusing hobbies. Yeah, I did. Before entering the web. Huh? The web? The, like the fucking metaverse? What is that? Imagine this. Your hamster that lives underground, you have everything for comfortable living. Did you imagine? Yeah, no, it, I did, I did. I just thought of, I literally visualized a hamster living underground, but not inside like a hole, but inside like a tiny little house. And he's standing on his back legs like, and he's got a little piece of cheese he's cutting up on a rock. That's exactly what I imagined. Yes, it's always your analogies are spot on. Okay, I imagined. All right, so you're a hamster that lives underground and you have everything for comfortable living, okay? Okay, wonderful. And here's the situation. You're a hamster that, you said that, you said that twice, suddenly. A firefly slowly crawls out of the laptop! I think it's trying to say something. I can see it myself. If only I knew what. Looks like a cipher. Don't you want to crack it? A little mystery, huh? A little bit of excitement? I changed my mind. I have absolutely no desire to find out what it wants to say. The firefly stops glowing for a moment after that. And it starts glowing again, as if coming back to its senses. For some time, it thinks about the further course of actions. Then flies up and dashes into my ear. Let's continue searching. Okay. There's a lot of stuff in here. Uh. Ugh. Ugh. Wait, is she sleeping on a sleeping bag in her room? That's a bit odd. But to have your kid sleeping on a fing sleeping bag, you can go to Goodwill and get a mattress for like fing five dollars. And what is this funky little. What are these funky little bricks down here? I can't click on those actually. Let's do the sleeping bag. This is my sleeping bag. It's soft and warm. I'm sure no living creature would be able to resist the temptation to spend a minute or two inside. Much like your mom, your mother, audience. They'd want to dig deep into it with a couple of favorite items. <laughs> hey, did you fall asleep? Huh? I gently slapped my cheeks to return myself to my senses. It's already way past midnight. Usually I'd be sleeping like a log at this time, but right now I, I can't. Let's continue searching. Hey, maybe we'll find something inside. My thoughts still have a feature of putting to sleep. Quite the contrary, they always cause insomnia. The toothbrush. I turn my eyes towards an inconspicuous shelf near the mirror. There's a glass with a toothbrush sitting on it and a small towel hanging nearby. What a wonderful sight. My fireflies are smart and good. They would never get in there. They know about personal hygiene. Okay, let's look somewhere else. Okay. Ooh, my meds. I look at the amount of pills and it makes me feel dizzy. I don't want to think about it. What's, what's wrong? I have almost skipped my dose for today. How reckless. I could have fucking died. Hey, calm down. You already fixed that, okay? No need to fucking stress. Yes, because you ordered me to. Is that an accusation? Okay. Of course not. It was what... Okay. I heave a deep sigh. Come closer and extend my hand. Wow, it's warm. The moment those words leave my lips, one of the bottles overturns. Pills rain down from it along with them. A firefly. Hooray! <laughs> After circling above my head a couple times, it finally lands in my palm. And upon reaching my shoulder, crawls straight into my ear. Ooh, that's fucking disgusting. My mind becomes a little bit clearer. Damn, what is this? Boy, what fucking did you order for dinner? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> also, interesting thing with this room. For one, she's got her sleeping on a sleeping bag. Two, who the fuck has a sink and a balcony in the room? What? Are you kidding me? That's fucking nuts. I tilt my head backwards and almost fall over. The closet is hanging under the ceiling at least 300 feet from the floor. Are you joking? Even though it's my room, not everything here is for me to use. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care at all. Like totally, and I'm, I'm definitely not worried. Not even the littlest bit, not even a smidgen of the littlest bit actually, not even for a thousandth of a percent. That's how much I don't care. Okay. <laughs> 
Hey, hey, I'm not even done, done telling you how much I don't care. From this moment on, I am ignoring you. Oh, no, you don't. Then act normal. Why can't you be normal? How about the notes? Usual notebook pages glued to the wall with duct tape. Numbers are drawn on them. It's the only kind of information I can take in without trouble. I'm like that too. I'm not good with writing or... I, I'm like that too. I can't keep things on like digitized format. It has to be physical. I have a little bulletin board behind me, like a cork board. I pin sticky notes to it like a psychopath. Dosage and side effects, I'm guessing? Yeah. Thought you knew them by heart by now. Yeah. This is not your handwriting, isn't it? It's your mom's. Of course, it's not. Shaky, broken lines, ugly numbers. It's not writing, it's more like claw marks. Don't forget to thank your mom. I don't need your advice, little disembodied fucking voice in my head. I'll eat you. My scream makes the pages rustle restlessly. After a moment, a firefly appears from underneath one of them. After looking around in a business-like manner, it takes off into the business-like flight. Ends up entering my business-like ear. Let's continue searching. God, she looks tired, man. Finish searching. I managed to gather my thoughts, but something still worries me. I lose something and then find it. It's just going back to the starting point. No changes at all, or zero sum. And happiness is always about being positive, right? You shouldn't think too much, it hurts you. I wanna sleep. How about you get some fresh air before sleeping, huh? What do you mean? Well, go to the balcony, breathe in some fresh air. You know, get some of that Tokyo City smog in your lungs. Somehow those words triggered a panic attack in me. I subconsciously step away from the balcony. I don't think it's a good idea. Why? This may sound silly, but I feel like someone's watching me. There's no, wow, there's no way somebody cares about you that much. <laughs> God damn! I'm not saying that. I, I, I this game it hits too close to home for me to take the fucking anarchist route here. I'm sorry. All right, let's just stay here. Yeah. What are you gonna do? What's with this silly question? I'm going to sleep, of course. I'm hoping that tomorrow will only come after a year or fucking decade. Imagining myself to be outside of my mortal shell, but at the same time still being me. Ridiculous, like milk outside a bag of milk holy f this is like when peter griffin said family guy you don't have to talk out loud for me to understand that you're worried about me i know that already i also know that our time is running short what does that mean you won't take another pill of course not in fact i won't take it tomorrow either and the day after tomorrow and never ever so that's a goodbye then no. I have one more small favor to ask you. A really small one. What is it? I blurted out way too much today, and a lot of stuff I'd want to forget forever. I don't blame you, but was it really necessary? You'll see tomorrow. No, I wouldn't be able to sleep like this. Fine, what's the fucking favor? I, um, I nervously scratch my wrist and bite on my lower lip. Wait a minute, you're afraid to tell me. Yes! I'm also scared that something bad might happen if I tell you. I'm also scared that, that when something bad happens, something way worse will happen. Stop, I get it already. Still, I won't leave you alone until you tell me. Bully. Snug as a bug in a fucking rug, dog. Look at this. The sleeping bag action. I crawl into my sleeping. I hope you guys are enjoying this, by the way. This is kind of like this. Is, I'm narrating a visual novel for you guys. This is fun. I crawl into my sleeping bag. The lower part of the room is very cold. And I hurry to wrap myself in blankets, even though the electric heater is working hard to keep me warm. <sighs> I'm sad because the dreams just won't come anymore. You won't believe me if I tell you how I dealt with it at first. But of course I'll believe you. I know, it was a joke. You're literally my subconscious. I washed my face, brushed my teeth, lied down, and started imagining that I'm watching a dream. 
I didn't sleep at all, of course, and I always look sleepy in the morning. After a week of insomnia, I started feeling weird and seeing things. Letters floating in the air, strange silhouettes that appeared in the most unexpected places. Bulging eyes with trembling pale pupils, it was scary, you know? Then one day, I almost died. I just collapsed in the middle of the room and I couldn't move for a while. The silhouettes and the letters and the eyes were hanging over me, hissing. It was horrible. And well-deserved, I guess. Felt like I was caught on the biggest lie in the world. Yes, it felt exactly like that. After that, I stopped. But the silhouettes, the letters, and the eyes stayed here. I guess they liked this place. They always follow me in my way, peeping at me, and I'm kind of scared of them and can't even argue with them. But today... 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 I... Still too scared to tell me? Of course, they're still listening, you know? I start chaotically twirling my fingers with enthusiasm, forming complex shapes. Like this. Uh, probably like, 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 like this. Some, something like that. You want me to tell you a bedtime story? Shh. And I was trying so hard here, don't you get it? They'll hear you. Relax, nobody can hear you. So, what do you say? I'd be happy to, but I have no idea how to tell them. Oh, it's incredibly easy. Just talk about something without stopping. Sounds silly. Sounds like what I've been doing for 58 minutes and 55 seconds. But it's not! And meaningless. You don't know what you're talking about. I know enough to realize that we'll just end up wasting time. Let's focus on something actually important. Boring! Fine. Close your eyes. Oh, is this when the hat man appears? Is this when the nightmares start? Oh shit, this looks like the first game. I wake up on a wooden bench. In front of me lies a narrow, dimly lit alley. An awfully familiar road. Where could I have seen it? Finally. I hear a voice coming from the side. I turn around and see a boy with a weird expression on his face. <laughs> You're late! Um, who are you? The boy blinks in bewilderment. We're not going anywhere like this. Try again. Then he takes a very deep breath. You are late! I stare at him, confused. And he stares back, also confused. Sorry? The boy nods, satisfied. This is the face of someone who has a diet that is strictly just the crumbs under the fridge. That is a crazy look on this boy's face. See? Much better. Do you have a name? My name's Tresca. I give the brat an evaluating look. He's so young, yet already coming at me with questions like this? None of your business. And besides, will anyone tell me what I'm doing here? Hey, that's rude. It's not like there's somebody else here besides me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> haven't they told you anything? I know all there is to know for one. About what? You're obligated to escort me to the store. Tresca says that and strikes a victory pose. No way I'm doing that. You do understand that refusal is futile. Well, aren't you full of yourself? I'm s I'm serious. <laughs> I'm not the one who decided that, okay? You think I'm delighted with your company? He's weird. Constantly shifting between happiness, sadness, loudness, silence. He's a wacko. And his name is stupid. Tresco? Who the f***? Was it oh, Trisket? His little f***ing crackers? Stupid name. F*** you. Are we going or what? You can go. I need to think. I'd be happy to, but I don't know the way. Jessica puts on a cunning smile. I'll be honest with you, I don't like you. Bad vibes, little boy, bad vibes. Once once my friends get old enough to start like popping out little kids, I, I'm gonna start beef with them by saying their kids have bad vibes. Oh, Juicy, please come to my uh, my son's first birthday party. And I'm gonna be over there in the corner sipping a beer going, kid gives me bad vibes. I don't like him. He simply bursts out laughing in reply. <laughs> I do like you, though. Then he grabs my hand without hesitation. I don't even have time to retort. Lead the way. Frank. Are we going to the store to buy more milk? Our trip to the store went fine, if not for the fact that Tresca was walking way faster than me. And, on the other hand, 
At times he stopped abruptly and went backward, studying the ground underneath his feet. In the end, the trip took a lot longer than it should have. Much like the first game, where we had to study every single crack in the sidewalk. After reaching the store's doors, we were greeted by a sign. We're closing in 20 minutes! Is this game Russian? Or Ukrainian? What is this? I just try to, to, to look at this text. Who had the bright idea to indicate their working hours in this way? They probably have special staff for this. Someone who runs to change the sign every five minutes. That's convenient. Do you imagine that? You're the sign flipper. That's all you do all day. Are you joking? Yeah. <laughs> You're so fucking annoying. <laughs> it's much better than being boring. How old are you, by the way? None of your business. Fuck off, little weird dream boy. And what's your name? None of your business! I was ready to slap the living hell out of this brat. But a scary looking man suddenly appeared behind the glass. He's holding a cardboard sign that says we're closing in 15 minutes. Oh my god. Let's go. What are you waiting for? Huh? Oh yeah. After another round of going across a long row of canned products, we realized that we're lost. I can't believe you don't know where they sell milk. I knew we were going to the store to buy milk! Ah! I, uh, um... Maybe we should ask somebody for directions. Sure! Hey, wait up! Tresca lets go of my hand and walks confidently towards one of the few store customers. That person is standing with their back to us, studying something on the shelf. Hello, can I? I can't hear neither the second part of his question nor the reply he gets, but my good-for-nothing friend freezes in place. Looking the customer straight in the eyes, I hurry towards them. Is he yours? <laughs> The customer talks to me. He speaks with disgust while wearing a scornful expression. I, um, <laughs> he's getting fucking hypnotized. If he's yours, please get him away from me. This little kid smells like fucking shrimp. He smells like raw shrimp. Yes, I'm sorry. I grab Tresca's hand and lead him away. He's still looking at the customer, his mouth ajar and his eyes popped out. He's also shaking. Is this a true story? Did we have a little brother? Because the little girl is obviously us. At least I'm getting the vibes that it is. Only when we turn around the corner, Tresca calms down. What was that? I, I got scared. He said, what? No, not again. Suddenly Tresca starts screaming like crazy. I cover his mouth with my hand. His face is burning and he's crying. Can you act normal, please? You don't understand. Of course I don't! I don't understand anything! Annoying other people is still wrong, though. This is something you don't understand, it seems. You're mean. <laughs> you're, you're mean. Oh, me? Tresca pushes me away and runs off. Drat. At the edge of my vision, I see the store's staff hang a new sign on the door. There you are. I meet Tresca at the cash register. Before that, I managed to visit the milk department after finding out where it was. Hey you, move! I hear an angry voice coming from the other side of a long queue that has formed after Tresca. I squeeze through toward him. What happened? The boy doesn't respond, he just looks at his feet and sniffs. The cashier towers over him, there's a bag of milk lying between them. Is he yours? The same question the other man asked. Yes. Just leave him home next time. This kid's fucking weird. He's, he's, your kid's giving me bad vibes. Damn, people in the queue not in agreement. Imagine the cashier saying you're weird and then everyone's like, the entire store just, yeah. Well, yeah, pay for the goods, please. Yes, of course. And the waiting, a waiting fee? What? You earned me. I did, but that's unheard of. Cheska starts giggling all of a sudden. Yeah, why is he smiling? And for the fact that your son... <laughs> And for the fact that your son is a re too. In a fit of rage, I throw a banknote to the cashier of much higher value than needed. Even counting all the stupid fees. And grab the bag of milk and turn around on my heels. We're leaving, Tresca. We spend the whole trip back in silence. At some point, we end up turning right toward a gas station. There, Tresca finally breaks. Do you like ice cream? Excuse me? No. Okay. I look at the boy's face. A light flickers in his eyes for a brief moment, then goes out. You know? He turns away from the path and starts walking straight towards the highway with determination. I stare at his back, confused. It seems like you're not helping me at all. A new playful light flickers in Tresca's eyes.
milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of milk. What? That was milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of... So after checking, we got one out of five paths in the game and we would need a entire another episode just as long as this one to get all of the other paths so that we can see the rest of this story. So if that's something that you guys want to see, then we, we got to comment like... Yeah, let me know on the video. Yeah, that's bag of milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of milk. The story of a teen dealing with mental illness. Uh, pretty crazy. Had me tearing up a couple times. Something that I can, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. A game dealing with how challenging it can be with some people with such bad anxiety and mental illness to do a simple task, such as buying milk from the grocery store or going to sleep for that matter. And yeah, pretty serious but interesting out there game that I absolutely love. And I loved the first one, but there is more to this story. I read just a tad and oh boy, there is a lot more that we are not getting. This shit is actually pretty deep. So if you guys like these types of games, you, yeah, just let me know. We don't ever do them. I mean, we've done like one ever. So it's fun. I like doing it. I like reading, stretching my brain muscles. Almost had a full on cry in that, but we, 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 we held it off. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you see you next time so that we can get down to the bottom of milk outside a bag 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 of milk.